What are the benefits to vitamin B12 and is there advantages to getting a shot? Let's talk about that. Vitamin B12 has two functions in your body that literally cause hundreds of key reactions, yet many of us are suboptimal in this vital nutrient on a consistent basis. Here are just a few examples. B12 works in biochemical pathways within the DNA that help protect against the development of cancer. This is done by a process that keeps the DNA replicating in its normal fashion. It also works in pathways that calm inflammation in the brain and the entire nervous system. Many people are aware that it is beneficial for energy pathways in the body, helping with energy and sleep. It is also helpful at decreasing the risk of heart disease. B12 helps prevent cancer, dementia, Alzheimer's, neuropathies, fatigue, insomnia, and many other conditions and disorders. So how do you know if you are low in B12? Vitamin B12 levels can be easily tested in standard blood tests from your doctor but the reference range is set up to prevent disease, not for optimal health. For optimal health, you want your blood levels of B12 to be above 1100. There are three ways to get B12 into your body. Getting B12 into the bloodstream from the intestinal tract is a complicated process with many steps. The absorption of the B12 from your food or oral supplementation requires a well-functioning stomach, pancreas, intrinsic factor, enzymes, and a healthy small intestine. Any inflammation of the digestive system will affect these factors, as will your age, being over the age of 50, and also if you are ADD, ADHD, or on that spectrum. Another way to take B12 is under the tongue. Passive absorption through sublingual supplementation is better than intestinal absorption, but percentages vary greatly depending upon the type of B12 and the vessel absorption rate. Most types on the market are cyanocobalamin or cyano B12. This type is a poor choice, even in the injected form, as it needs to be converted two times with an enzyme in order to be the active form, become the active form of vitamin B12 in the body. Hydroxy or methylcobalamin are the preferred types. The third way is to receive a vitamin B12 shot. There is no question that you will have a much higher utilization of your vitamin B12 through getting this shot. Again, hydroxy or methylcobalamin B12 are the preferred forms. Unfortunately, most doctors inject cyanocobalamin or cyano B12. If you are or have experienced the following symptoms, you are probably B12 deficient. If you are highly stressed, emotional or physical, if you are a vegan or vegetarian, if you have ADD or ADHD or have a spectrum disorder, if you have dementia or age-related memory issues, if you have depression and anxiety, if you have abdominal discomfort, constipation or diarrhea, nerve damage, numbness or tingling, a sore tongue, easy bruising, anemia, insomnia, whether that's difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep. A question I get a lot is, how often do I need a B12 injection? That is a really hard question to answer since B12 is processed at different rates in different people and even in the same person from day to day. It really all depends upon stress levels, inflammation levels, adequate cofactors, as well as existing conditions or disease processes that utilize B12. But that is a long answer. The short answer is, I usually will recommend a build-up protocol of one injection a week for four to five weeks, then go to one injection a month for 10 months, all the while taking a good quality sublingual B12. Then perhaps wean back further to a maintenance dose of one injection every three months. You can't overdose on B12, as it is a water-soluble vitamin. There's never been any toxicity shown with taking too much B12. The only concern with taking B12 is if you are not getting enough folate, another B vitamin. Then you may be covering up a folate deficiency. So you just need to make sure you're getting a good source of folate in as well. Again, have your blood levels checked if you have any questions about your current levels. In doing so, remember that you want your levels to be at at least 1100. Most lab equipment will test up to 2000. If your report comes back and it says that you're above 2000, then know that you are at optimal levels and to keep doing what you're doing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the answers you were looking for. Remember to subscribe so we can share other videos with you. Thanks.